Hey everybody, welcome to Crack a Pack Tuesday, number 20 on the Mana League. I'm John, as always, and we've got some more Magic Origins, a draft format that I am just not getting. I'm not able to uh, seem to win that well in this draft format. Sealed, I'm doing fantastically well. I'm loving the sealed. But wow, am I not getting draft. Let's see if we can open this pack and... Uh, See what we would take, pack one, pick one, and attempt to do better than one and two in a draft. Up first, we've got Amperin Tactician. Two white, white for a 3-3. Three, three. When Amperin Tactician enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. This sounded pretty good. I've yet to see it really get used to too much effect. It's, it's just not been all that awesome as far as I've been concerned. Um, I think the double white hurts it. The fact that it's a four drop hurts it. You don't want that many four drops in this set. Um, yeah, not a card that I'm taking all that highly that I used to actually take somewhat highly. Next up, we've got Fetid Imp. Fetid Imp is a one and a black creature imp. With flying, you can pay a black to give it death touch. Still in a turn. And it's a 1-2. Uh, this is actually a really good card. Uh, it's a 2-drop. Two 2-drops two are king in this format. 2-drops rule this format through and through. Um, this isn't the best 2-drop in terms of just powerful stats. It's no token free blade or anything like that. But it's going to hold off everything in the format including flyers this is like mardu hate blade which was really good in cons uh and this is just as good it's uh, completely black you don't have to you know pay white to cast it and then pay black to give it death touch yeah it, it just it blocks everything i probably wouldn't take this first pick it would have to be a pretty bad pack and they exist in origins boy do they exist in origins um but yeah i wouldn't super be looking to take this first pick but it's a consideration Next up, we've got Smash to Smithereens. This is a one and a red instant destroy target artifact. Smash to Smithereens deals three damage to that artifact's controller. Pure sideboard card, not something that you're going to be using for, uh, uh, you know, your main deck ever. Artifacts aren't really a huge thing in this set. Yeah, there's a ton of them, and the vast majority are stone unplayable. Um, you're going to use this if you see... Uh, uh, a sort of the animus that you want to get rid of, and even then I don't think I would side it in. Um, it's really good against Majoring Responder. Uh, it's okay against a Hangerback Walker that hasn't gotten too big yet. Um, beyond that, there's just not that much that you're really looking to destroy with this. Um, but it's a sideboard card if you're already in red. Next up, we've got Healing Hands. This is a two and a white sorcery. Target player gains four life. That's probably going to be you. And draw a card. Uh, this is almost unplayable. It's sideboard playable if you're up against uh, heavy aggro. And that's probably all you're going to play in this format is heavy aggro. So if you need just some extra life, you can play this because it does replace itself. So it's not, you know, completely garbage. It's just mostly there. Uh, sideboard card, though, you're not really going to main deck this ever. Next up, we've got Nivix Barrier. Nivix Barrier is a three and a blue creature illusion wall that has flash. It's an 04. And when it enters the battlefield, uh, target attacking creature gets minus four, minus O until end of turn. I've used this really, really effectively in sealed. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it translates to draft quite as well. But if you are in the blue black control deck, which exists, it's just very hard to pull off. Uh, this is a decent part of it, because your opponent's going to be attacking you. In this format, they're going to be attacking you constantly. So having A, an 4 wall, which blocks most of the things they're attacking you with, B, the fact that you can flash this in, screw up their combat math, maybe even take out something of theirs without trading, uh, really makes this fairly decent. It's not first pickable, it's mid-pack is where you want to pick this up, maybe even late pack, um, but it can do some good stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Nivix Barrier, um, but again, control decks, grindy decks, they're just really hard to pull off in this format, so I don't think I'm going to take this terribly highly. Next up, we've got Elvish Visionary. Elvish Visionary is a one and a green elf shaman. It's a one one, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to draw yourself a card. 
So this is uh, pretty darn good. It's, um, you know, a 1-1 one, one for 2, which isn't great, but it draws a card, and drawing a card, of course, is fantastic. Uh, it's a 2-drop, which you want to be playing things on turn 2. You want to be playing a lot of things on turn 2. Um, yeah, this is just, it, it's card advantage. It's It keeps you in the game. It, you know, helps you curve out by getting yet another piece of uh, your deck into your hand. Uh, and, of course, it just gets even better in Black Green Elves, which is certainly a deck. Um, probably not first pickable. Uh, it doesn't do much, you know, to impact the board beyond being a 1-1 for the time being, but uh, a fine card. Next up, we've got Claustrophobia. This is a 1 blue-blue aura. Enchant creature, when Claustrophobia enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't on-tap during its controller's on-tap step. I love this card. It's blue's best removal. Um, it's generally going to be just flat out removal for the entire game. Yeah, maybe they have a way of bouncing the creature. Maybe they have a way of killing the enchantment. Um, the worst feeling, of course, is if they have some way of untapping their token free blade uh, that you put this on, because then it's never going to tap again. Um, but generally, this just gets what you put it on and uh, keeps it down for the rest of the game. And that's fantastic. That's fantastic in blue. That's fantastic in this format. Uh, yeah, Claustrophobia is first pickable. Next up, we've got Guardians of Miletus. Guardians of Miletus is a 3-mana 06 wall. It's a defender. It's not actually a wall, it's a golem. Uh, but yeah, it's an 06 defender. It, it's not something you want to be playing main deck. It's not something you want to be planning on playing unless you are getting together that awesome blue-black control deck. Um, but it's a total sideboard card. Uh, if your opponent just happens to be faster than you are, this holds off almost everything in the format. It doesn't hold off a uh, an Outland Colossus, a Gaia's Revenge, or uh, a Mage Ring Responder. But that's about it. Um, doesn't hold off Flyers, obviously, but you know it holds off the Free Blades. It holds off the uh, the the three twos and the two twos and the two ones and everything that's going to be down early game. So uh, sideboard card if you need it, I think. Next up, we've got Fiery Impulse. More removal. Uh, this is a single red instant Fiery Impulse. Deals 2 damage to target creature. If you have Spell Mastery, it deals 3 damage. So sometimes it's Shock, sometimes it's Lightning Bolt. Both of those cards are really, really, really good. And uh, yeah, Fiery Impulse is also really, really, really good. Uh, totally first pickable. Next up, we've got Knight of the Pilgrim Road. It's a 2 uh, and a white, 3-2. It's got Renown 1. So when this deals combat damage to a player, it's going to become a 4-3. Uh, yeah, 3 drops, you want a lot of them as well. Preferably more 2 drops, but you want a lot of 3s as well, especially efficient 3s. And a 3-2 that becomes a 4-3 is pretty darn efficient for 3 mana. Uh, not first pickable, but pretty highly pickable, and uh, you're going to want to jam at least a couple of these in your white decks for sure. Next up, we've got Brawler's Plate. 3 mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has trample, and it costs four to equip. Uh, I've never seen anybody play this. Um, well, I've seen a few people play it. They rarely even get the chance to equip it, because it's four to equip, and that is expensive. And then the creature just dies, and then they've got to pay four again. Um, this is way too expensive. Plus two, plus two, and trample's cool, but I don't want to be paying a minimum of seven mana to get that effect to start happening. Um, this is way too slow. It's way too slow for most formats. It's way too slow for this format. Next up, Chief of the Foundry. Three mana artifact creature construct. Other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and it's a two, three. Uh, if you can pull off a huge Thopter deck, then this guy's awesome. You know, make all your Thopters two twos. Um, as a two, three for three, it's okay. But the general sort of um, cost ratio is 3 for a 3-2 in this format. We already saw Knight of the Pilgrim's Road. Um, so you're already losing a bit of power by playing a 3-mana 2-3. But if you do have a bunch of um, uh, Thopters, then this guy gets a little bit better. Uh, I don't know if I'd play him to pump up Bonded Constructs, and I wouldn't really play any other artifact creatures just because I had this. I wouldn't be playing my Goldforge Sentinels or my Ram Rollers or anything like that. Uh, but if you you know, if you know, have heavy Thopters, then I could see uh, 
uh, this guy being pretty good. I would go heavy thopters and then pick this guy up rather than picking this guy up and hoping to go heavy thopters because gear crafter, engineer, whirler, rogue, they're all high picks regardless of whether the person's going thopters. So you may just not see them if you pick this guy too early. So take this guy after you know you want him. Next up, we've got Foundry of the Consoles. This is the land. Tap it, get a mana. Get one colorless mana. Or you can pay five, tap it, sack it, to get yourself two Thopters. Um, I, don't, I don't like this card, personally. I don't want to hurt my mana base by playing a colorless land. I don't want to fall behind by destroying a land just to get two Thopters. But I've seen it do a lot of really good work. I've been killed by it. Just not having flyers, getting into a board stall, and then crack the foundry, get pinged to death with two thopters. I see the value in it, and I should probably try playing it a little bit more. Um, it, it's, it's got reach, you know, it, it gets you through that stalled, grindy game when, you know, nothing is quite happening in the game. Um, so I need to pick this and maybe try playing this a little bit more regularly uh, because currently I don't like it, but I know that it's actually pretty okay. Our rare, Scab Clan Berserker. One red red for a human berserker. It's a 2-2 with haste. It's got renown one, so maybe it's somebody that becomes a 3-3. Uh, and actually pretty regularly can become a 3-3 because you can play this with haste when your opponent has tapped out or hasn't played a creature or attacked with a creature and get in and make it a 3-3. And from then on, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, Scab, can, scla, yeah, Scab Clan Berserker deals two damage to that player, so long as it's renowned. Um, yeah, it, it basically makes your opponent's removal that much more costly. Your opponent's aura is that much more costly. Your opponent's read the bones, cost four life, etc. Um, pretty darn decent. The red red's a little bit of a pain, but... You know, if this wasn't red red, if this was two in a red, it would be very overpowered um, to get a 2-2 two, two haste that's going to become a 3-3 three, three and then have that big effect on it. Um, I haven't personally played with it. I've played against it, and it is definitely kind of annoying. Um, that being said, if the renown doesn't happen, so if this gets played, you know, up against uh, Guardians of Miletus or something, then this is a lot less scary. A lot less scary. It's just a 2-2 at that point. Uh, the haste only matters the first time it comes down. If it doesn't get in that time, then this is probably just going to live its life as a 2-2. It's going to be pretty hard to get this renowned, as with most renowned creatures, I find. Um, so yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if we pick this one. Do we have a foil? We don't. We have a land and a tip card. So we're looking at Scott Clan Berserker. We're looking at Claustrophobia. And we're looking at fiery impulse so as i was saying just a few seconds ago about scab clan, scab clan berserker i love it when it gets renowned and if it doesn't get renowned if you don't play this on turn three if you don't play this into a uh, uh an opponent who doesn't have an untapped blocker it's awesome or sorry if you do play it if you don't play it into those situations it's just a 2-2, and it will live its life as a 2-2. So ultimately, as with most Magic Origins rares, I don't think I'm going to first pick it. So I'm looking at the removal. I'm looking at the blue removal. I'm looking at the red removal. Blue is a pretty weak color in this format. Um, a lot of the cards want to go grindy, and they want to go long, and it's just really hard to do that. So I think ultimately I'm going to have to go with the Shock Bolt, Fiery Impulse, Solid removal, uh, two mana or two damage uh, burn removal early game, ideally three damage burn removal late game. Just a solid all around card. Let me know what you would have taken. Would you have taken the Berserker? Would you have taken the Claustrophobia? Would you have taken something else? The, uh, I don't know, the Healing Hands. Let me know in the comments below what you would have taken. Let me know how Magic Origins is going for you. It's going miserably for me. I'm really hoping to turn it around at uh, F&M this week in paper and uh, on Spiky Saturday uh, online. Uh, but definitely let me know how you're doing in the comments below what you would have taken. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana Leak. That's L E E K, like the vegetable, not the card. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com/slash the Mana Leak. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got the comment section down below. As I said, 
If you like the videos, click those little thumbs up icons. That lets me know that you like the videos, the world know that you like the videos, and keeps my videos rising up through the ranks. Finally, if you haven't subscribed, you should. There's a button below each video and one in the outro of each video. That'll keep you up to date on all the latest Cracker Pack Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, Spiky Saturdays, and all the other videos that pop up here or there. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.